Hello everyone and welcome to another virtual dose of vitamin Z. I am outside the snow monkey habitat here where we are going to be joined by Tammy, our associate curator of mammals, to talk a little bit more about the troop of 10 who live here. Hi, good morning. So I'm just going to turn the camera around so you guys can see the snow monkeys while we talk about them. So snow monkeys are a type of primate. Um, they're actually, besides humans, the primates that live in the most northern part of the world. So they are adapted to really cold weather, which is good because despite the beautiful weather we're having here today, it can get cold and they have the adaptations to survive that cold weather. So they have these really short, stumpy bodies. They're only about 25 pounds and um, two feet long. Um, and despite being monkeys uh, and having tails, their tails are really short and close to their bodies and that's really important for cold weather so that they don't freeze off or get hypothermia. Um, they live in evergreen forests in Japan um, and they have a really cool cu culture. So they can learn from each other. They live in these really big troops that um, are controlled by um, they're led by women, um, and that's no different than here at the zoo where our troop is made up of seven females and three males. So Tammy, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the members of the troop? Yeah, so if you can see down here a little bit, we have some very young animals. We have a four-month-old baby that was born this year in 2020, and then last year, uh, her name is June, and the other female's name is Hona, and they are both the daughters of Carmen, who is one of our adult females, um, and Haru, which is an adult male. So t there are 10 monkeys, like you said, and they all get along pretty well. Now, during breeding season, you can have a little bit of chasing and um, some heightened activity, but this rock, as we call it, the rock, it has a beautiful waterfall. It has a hot tub over here on the right, which today isn't very useful, but they do use it in the winter time. Um, these monkeys spend a lot of time grooming foraging, which they're doing right now. Danielle is giving them some sunflower seeds and lima beans. Um, so right now they're looking for things in the grass, which is a very important behavior. Primates spend a lot of time foraging. It keeps their mind busy, their bodies active, and it gives them um, a very big reward when they find that lima bean or sunflower seed. It's very gratifying for them. They're all calmly eating, as you can see, because this reward of sunflower seeds and lima beans isn't like a super high value, like grapes maybe, or uh, bananas, that maybe you would see some chasing. So lima beans, as you know, maybe not the most <laughs> favorite thing. So you mentioned some of the things they eat, but they have an omnivore diet, right? So they eat um, meat and fruits and vegetables. What are some other things that you guys feed them? So yes. grapes are a big in-demand They love grapes. <laughs> yes, they love grapes and bananas, apples, fruit, of course. But they also eat things like boiled eggs, which is um, an omnivore type of thing. We also give them roots and things that, that they would normally dig up. So like we give them sweet potatoes and yams and things like that. Um, but for enrichment, sometimes we do ice treats. Like you said, they're very adaptable to hot and cold weather. They really actually prefer the cold weather. So they are comfortable eating ice treats, even when it's a little chilly outside. Um, so we'll freeze their treats in the ice and they have to sort of break it open. These monkeys are very intelligent and they can use it as a tool. So they'll take their ice and they'll bang it on the rocks and to get the treat inside. If you want to focus up top, you can see up there a grooming session. Now, one of the monkeys is laying down comfortably in the sun, and then the other one is grooming. That's a very important behavior for skin, for hair, but also for bonding. So these two animals are obviously very friendly with one another. They're, that bond is increased by the grooming, and they're both really enjoying the activity. And this is like a learned behavior, right? This is something that the troops learn and pass on to each other, and it's an example of culture within the snow monkey troop. Yes, researchers find that these um, type of monkeys even have their own dialect or their own um, accent. accent. Yes, exactly. So they might make noises, which it was funny when we first showed up and Danielle came with the goodies, they were sort of vocalizing and that right. The vocalization was, oh, zookeeper's coming with treats. And it was a very positive noise. But that particular sound is different for this group of monkeys than it would be for another group. So I see that's uh, June right there, right? June, nope, June is very oh. small. She's kind of, you'd have to kind of hold your camera up. She's really tiny, actually. Oh, they both look little, right. don't yeah. they? <laughs> when they get next to each other, you can yeah, definitely big. see the difference between 
her older sister and her. Yes, big sister um, is, looks a lot so bigger. So what are some of the behaviors that they're learning? Um, they can learn how to shake the trees. So there's some behaviors where they display. So like the males will go up on these branches and shake them and sort of display and say, look how big and tough I am. And you'll find these little ones, even though they're little runts, you know, they'll run mm -hmm. up there and do that. And it's really cool to see they're shaking the tree, even though it barely moves because they're <laughs> tiny. Um, they're shaking the tree. They're making vocalizations. They find um, that they can wash their food in the hot tub or in the waterfall. So if we gave them, say, something that was wet, like a, a banana, for example, and it got some dirt on it, they will take it over and dunk it in the water. And that's learned from their family members and their aunts and uncles and things like that, which is really nice to see. Um, like you said, the grooming, but they also get enrichment. Sometimes it's in a building inside here, or, but they can rip open boxes and bags and things like that to look inside. They get they learn that from their family, so it's really neat to see them um, having a group. And they're raised by their mother, of course, but they're also raised by their family members. All right, so babies, definitely human babies at least, require a lot of care and a lot of checkups. What are checkups like for snow monkeys? How do you guys take care of the snow monkeys here? Well, zookeepers are highly trained in observation, so they make sure that, that all of these monkeys are eating mobile using their motility and moving around they look at their fur their texture of their coats they look at their behavior if you have an animal that's pretty shy and she's acting shy that's great if you had an animal that was very um you know goes up to zookeepers and is very close to them and she was sort of hanging back you would wonder maybe she's not feeling well we get weights on them we do annual exams um, the vets do visual checks on them so they're highly monitored and make sure we make sure that they're doing well um, the weights tell us a lot. They also get annual vaccinations and teeth cleanings and things like that to make sure they're healthy. Look, there she's shaking the branch. She was just doing it. It's really cute because um, they, they're very strong, but the you little guys ones can are not. See all these trees here? They're brought over from all different parts of the zoo to build up their habitat and give them something to climb on and explore. I'm going to get that tree shaking behavior we <laughs> talk about there. Yeah, she so imagine, really imagine the little ones doing that. It's hilarious. They're so, they're so cute. So what features of their habitat do they enjoy? So you mentioned the tree shaking and the hot tub. Do they hang out there a lot in the winter? Yes, and they also, throughout different periods of the day, this rock will get sun on different parts of it. So say in the morning when the sun is shining on the west side, um, or the east side, they'll be over here. On, in the evening, it's on the west. So I don't know it if depends. you guys can hear some of that vocalization. Yeah, there's, there's a little chasing. <laughs> and, and this is all normal. Chasing, um, maybe vocalizing, having little you know, skirmishes is perfectly normal. And it, they're, they're our dominant animals. And, and they do all their little things and shaking things. And as you can see, Haru over here, he just climbed over. Um, He's kind of an outlier. He stays on the outskirts of the group a little bit. Uh, so he might get a little nervous when he hears a, um, an altercation like that. But they don't do any physical harm to each other. It's just all intimidation, honestly. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to send them in. <laughs> they sure are cute. And it's really neat to see them sort of um, getting nervous and kind of jumping under mom. She can fit really good under that belly there and she's kind of hiding. And I see her exploring more and more and getting a little further away from mom, but yes. not too far. And big sister helps when mom knows that um, June is with big sister, she's okay with that because she knows that she's safe. Now, when one of the big males comes along, maybe she'll scoop her back up, but. So at what point do they become adults? At 18 months, they would not nurse anymore and they would be re completely reliant on solid food. But she already, as you can see, she's eating sunflower seeds. She can eat solid food now. Because it's a matrilineal society, like you said, she would never leave this group. She would just stay with her mother and have a rank that's you know comparable with her mother, which Carmen has a high rank here, which is great for June. Um, so they would just stay in this, in this group, but she wouldn't rely nutritionally on her mom after 18 months. All right, so thank you so much for joining us and for answering some of our snow monkey questions. I'm going to turn this camera around so we can say thank you to our viewers for joining us. And thank be sure you. if you have any other questions, go ahead and send them in and we'll be sure to answer them even after this broadcast is Absolutely. over. Otherwise, stop on by and visit the snow monkeys. They are super cute and 
really fun to watch. For sure. Have a great day, everyone.